Hi guys! In this video we'll be looking at methods of inducing an EMF, Faraday's law, and we'll finish with a summary. We're going to look at different methods of inducing an electromotive force, or EMF. An EMF is induced when there is relative movement between a magnetic field and a conductor. For example, in the case of a dynamo, a magnet rotating causes an EMF to be induced in an external circuit and this causes a bulb to turn on. This corresponds to the conductor cutting through the lines of flux, so a change in magnetic flux linkage through the conductor. So as the magnet rotates, the flux through this certain area A of the conducting coil is going to change as time passes. And therefore, there is a changing magnetic flux over time. We induce an EMF by changing the magnetic flux linkage through a conductor. This can be done in a number of ways, such as first of all rotating a conductor within a magnetic field. Here we have a coil with number of turns n equals 1, and it's rotating in a magnetic field. And therefore, over time, the magnetic flux is going to change. And the magnetic flux linkage is also going to change. Although flux linkage applies to coils, substituting n equals 1 is going to give us the flux. We usually just say flux linkage. Another way to induce an EMF is by continuously varying the magnitude of the magnetic flux density of the magnetic field passing through the conductor. So for example, we have two different flux densities B1 and B2. So over time, it's going to change between these two flux densities. So changing between the flux linkage being equal to B1 times the area of the coil A times the number of turns N and B2 times the area of the coil A times the number of turns N. And therefore over time, the magnetic flux linkage is changing. Another way to induce an EMF is to move a conductor into a uniform magnetic field of constant flux density. So here is a uniform flux density of magnitude B. Initially the conductor is outside the magnetic field and over time it's moved inwards and outwards of the magnetic field, causing the magnetic flux to change from phi equals zero to phi equals B times A. And so there's a changing magnetic flux linkage. Now we're going to continuously vary the area swept out by a conductor in a uniform magnetic field. Here we have a conducting rod moving along the rails with a certain velocity v. And if we change the area that's swept out by this conductor from A1 to A2, we're going to induce a change in the magnetic flux linkage. We're now going to define an important law called Faraday's law. We know that an electromotive force is induced whenever there is a change in magnetic flux linkage. For example, in this case, the magnetic field has been rotated. And as it's rotated, the component of the magnetic flux density that is perpendicular to the area decreases. And therefore, the magnetic flux linkage also decreases. This causes an EMF to be induced. And the EMF that is induced is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. This is known as Faraday's law. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that the magnitude of induced EMF in a circuit is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage through the circuit. So over a certain time, delta T, the magnetic flux is going to change from phi1 to phi2 where phi1 is greater than phi2. The number of turns in the coil n remains constant. And therefore we can write that the EMF, which we represent with epsilon, is proportional to phi2 minus phi1 times the number of turns in the coil n divided by delta t. We can now write Faraday's law as an equation.
the EMF, which is measured in volts, is equal to minus times the change in magnetic flux linkage, which is the change in N times phi, and is measured in units of Weber's, divided by the change in time. It's important to remember the minus sign here, and we're going to discuss the origin of this minus sign later. The greater the change in flux linkage in a given time, or the quicker the change occurs, the greater the induced EMF. So let's look again at our, the case of our coil entering a uniform magnetic field over a certain time, delta t. We can increase the induced EMF by increasing the change in flux linkage by increasing the strength of the magnetic flux density. So we can either increase B or we can decrease the time over which the change occurs. Let's do an example. A circular loop of wire of area 3.2 cm squared is perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field of flux density 1.2 tesla. It is rotated over 3 seconds until it's parallel to the field. What is the induced EMF in the coil? So we know that initially the magnetic flux density is equal to 1.2 tesla and it is perpendicular to the coil. We know that the area of the coil is equal to 3.2 cm squared and that delta t is equal to 3 seconds and that's the time taken to rotate the circular loop until it's parallel to the field. And we're asked to find the induced EMF in the coil. Step 1 is to write down the relevant formula for induced EMF. This is Faraday's law stating that the induced EMF is equal to minus the change in magnetic flux linkage, which is N times phi, divided by delta T. Now we're going to write down the formula for magnetic flux linkage. Magnetic flux linkage is N times phi, which is equal to the magnetic flux density times the area times N. In this case, N equals 1, and therefore we know that the flux linkage is simply equal to the magnetic flux, which is equal to B times A. Step 3 is to write down the magnetic flux linkage before and after the rotation. So before the rotation, the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic flux density. So we know that the magnetic flux phi is equal to B multiplied by A. When the coil is parallel to the magnetic flux density, the magnetic flux is equal to zero. So now we can write down the change in magnetic flux linkage during the rotation. It goes from phi 1 being equal to B times A when the coil is perpendicular to magnetic field lines to being phi 2 equals 0 when the coil is parallel to the magnetic field lines. So therefore, the change in n times phi is equal to phi 2 minus phi 1, which is equal to 0 minus b times a, which is equal to minus b times a. Now step 5, let's substitute the formula for the change in magnetic flux linkage into the induced EMF equation. So we know that the induced EMF is equal to minus the change in magnetic flux linkage, which in this case is minus b times a. And this is divided by delta t. So therefore, we can easily see that the induced EMF is simply equal to b times a divided by delta t. Our final step is to substitute in the values to find the induced EMF. So the induced EMF is equal to the magnetic flux density, which we're told in the question is 1.2 tesla, times the area, which we're told in the question is 3.2 centimeters squared. So we need to remember to change this into meters squared by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 2 squared 
and then we divide by delta t, which is three seconds. And finally, we get that the induced EMF is equal to 1.28 times 10 to the minus 4 volts, which is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4 volts to two significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap device smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.